Dr. Carl Louis Rudolf Alexander Lukart was born in Gissen, Germany on June 23, 1854. He was the son of famous zoologist Carl George Frederick Rudolf Lukart, who he was named after. We don't have any pictures of Lukart because we couldn't find any, but at one point he was probably a child, so he might have looked something like this baby right here. Uh, as for his education, uh, he attended the University of Leipzig and the University of Göttingen. In 1879, he got his PhD from the former, and in 1883, he did his habilitation at the latter, where he also became a professor later on in his career. Uh, this is also the institution where he would work at when he discovered his famous Lukart reaction. So the Lukart reaction's history will be covered by Amon in a second, but we can presume that it involved a lot of chemicals, a lot of experimentation, and of course, a lot of science. And unfortunately, he died in Leipzig, Germany on July 24th, 1889. Again, we don't have any pictures of him in his twilight years, but uh, we have this placeholder right here, and he's happy and smiling about the life that he lived. In this short video, we're going to see how the mechanism of the Lukart reaction works. Uh, so this reaction converts a ketone or an aldehyde into an amine and does so under two mechanisms. Uh, the first uses ammonium formate as a reagent. So ammonium formate is uh, it's an ionic salt of ammonium and formate, uh, and these are going to disassociate and react with each other to form formic acid uh, and ammonia. So what we're going to do with our sort of target uh, ketone or aldehyde that we want to react and turn into an amine is we're going to react it with that ammonium that we created, which is going to uh, act as a nucleophile, attack the carbonyl, bump the electrons up onto the oxygen, and leave us with this ionized compound. So what we want to sort of work towards is this oxygen being a leaving group. Um, and what we do to do that is protonate it, turn it into uh, water, which is a lot better of a leaving group. Um, so from here, we don't want to take any more hydrogens off of this nitrogen. Uh, those are the same hydrogens that are going to be in the uh, amine in our final product. Uh, so what we actually want to do is take the formic acid that we have from before. Uh, that is going to protonate our current compound. Here we go. And now we have water that can leave. So from here, water is going to leave. This lone pair is going to come down, form a double bond. Um, so water is now gone, and we are left with this structure here. So pretty close to uh, an amine now, but we have sort of this sp2 uh, double bond pi action going on and we want to bring it back to uh, sp3 um, hybridization uh, we want to get rid of this double bond somehow um, so the way that we're going to do that is this sort of has a resonance structure here um, that has a positive we have a carbocation and what this carbocation can do is take uh, the remaining hydrogen from this formate that we had from before. And what's actually going to happen is the negative charge on this oxygen in the formate is going to come down, uh, help split this hydrogen off, protonate at that carbonyl, and now we have our amine and carbon dioxide as a byproduct. Hey guys, so this is our ammonium formate problem. I'm going to give you a few seconds to pause the video here to work it out on your own. So this should have been the final product that you got in. If not, that is fine. I'm going to work out the mechanism with you so I understand how to do this problem. So the first step is to have the ammonium and formate react. This will give you formic acid and ammonium. 
Then you will use the ammonia you just formed to attack the ketone, which will push the electrons from the double bond up to the oxygen, giving it a negative charge. So this negatively charged oxygen will be protonated twice, once with the hydrogen from the ammonia that, you, that just attacked the ketone, and once from the hydrogen from the formic acid that you formed in this step. So after that is done, you will ha have the lone pairs from the nitrogen come down to help kick out the water. This will result in the nitrogen having a positive charge. So what you can do is you can draw the resonance structure um, to have the positive charge on the carbon and giving the amine its sp3 character. Then to stabilize this molecule, you will use um, you will protonate the carbon using the formate that was formed from this step. After that is done, you will have a byproduct of CO2. And this reaction doesn't stop here. It would need to react once more. So this is our form AMI problem. You can pause the video here to work out the mechanism. So our first step is to have the form amide attack the ketone, which will cause the electrons from the double bond to move up to the oxygen, giving it a negative charge. This negatively charged oxygen can then be protonated twice to form water, which will result in a negatively charged nitrogen. So the electrons from this negatively charged nitrogen can then come down to form a double bond to help kick out water, which will result in this molecule. Then you can draw out its resonance structure, which will result in a positively charged carbon and a negatively charged oxygen. This new molecule can then be reacted with um, a formate that was made from the hydrolysis of form amide as a side reaction, which is shown here. Then you would form a bond with the hydrogen um, from the formate here, shown here, to form a CO2 byproduct. And it will give you this new molecule. So then, then to stabilize this new molecule, more specifically the um, negatively charged oxygen, you can protonate it with um, a hydrogen from the um, ammonium that was created from this side reaction to form this new molecule this stabilized molecule. Let's talk about the real world applications of the Lucart reaction. I'd like to start off by presenting this problem. Propose a synthesis of the following compound shown below, starting with benzene and other compounds containing no more than three carbon atoms. Also incorporate the Lucart reaction into your synthesis. I will continue. Here's a possible solution. Starting from benzene, an electrophilic aromatic substitution can be performed to yield the compound BMK. And from BMK, a Lucart synthesis could be performed with the reagent formamide. The synthesis would occur in two steps, the first being the reaction directly with formamide and the second being the hydrolysis of the imine in the presence of acid to form the compound amphetamine. Here's an expanded mechanism of the Lucart reaction that occurs in two steps in the synthesis. And here are some references discussing the synthesis of amphetamine just covered, and more generally, the synthesis of amphetamines, methamphetamine, and other related compounds using the Lucart reaction. In fact, the Lucart reaction is widely used to synthesize a variety of drugs, and in particular, drugs of a major class called benzodiazepines. Benzodiazepines have effects on the nervous system and are used to treat anxiety, insomnia, and other psychiatric conditions and disorders.